sum. The first function we all learned. It's great for adding up columns and rows. But what if I told you sum can actually do the job of count ifs, sum ifs, even average ifs without switching functions? In fact, it can also overcome the limitations of those functions. Surprised? There's more, so let's get started. We'll use this data set for the examples. It's daily sales by category, item, region, units sold, unit price, and sales value. It's formatted in an Excel table, and you can see here the name of the table is sales, so I'll be referring to the data using the table name and column names, which will make the formulas quicker to write. Okay, let's say you need to count how many days you sold more than $1,000 worth of mice. The obvious way is to use the count ifs function, and the first criteria range are the sales values. The criteria is where they are greater than 1,000. By the way, strictly speaking, criterion is singular and criteria is plural, but in Excel and everyday usage, it's widely accepted to refer to a single condition in a formula as criteria. So that's what I'll be using. All right, the second criteria range are the items and the criteria is mouse. Close parentheses on count ifs and we get three. That is the formula counts records where the sales value is greater than 1000 and the sales item is mouse. Now, a few people don't know that the sum function can also do this. Now, I'll write the formula and then I'll explain how it works. Each set of conditions goes inside parentheses. Again, I want the sales value where it's greater than 1000, close parentheses on that condition. Then I multiply that by the next condition, which is where the item equals mouse. Close double quotes, close parentheses on my second condition. So what we have here are two logical tests, one for each condition. Close parentheses on sum, and we get the same result, three. So how does it work? Well, if I select the first logical test, you can see it returns an array of true and false values, one for each cell in the sales value column. True is returned where the sales values are greater than 1000. And then the second logical test does the same for the item column, returning true where the cell contains mouse. Now the sum function can't add up these true and false values, but they have a numeric equivalent of one for true and zero for false, and we can coerce them into their numeric equivalents by performing a math operation on them. And that's where multiply comes in. To illustrate what's happening under the hood, I've placed the two logical tests in separate columns beside the data. Here you can see the true and false results. And when they're multiplied by one another, we get zeros and ones because false times false is the same as zero times zero, which equals zero. True times true is the same as one times one, which equals one. And true times false is the same as one times zero, which equals zero. And then the sum formula simply adds them up. So it's only where both conditions are true that the record is included in the count. In other words, the conditions are treated as and criteria. That is in this example, where the sales value is greater than 1000 and where the item is mouse. What if we wanted to count the rows where there are sales for mice or keyboards? If we try that with count ifs. So where the item is keyboard or the item is mouse. Close parentheses and we get zero because count ifs can't handle all criteria, but some can. Again, for some we wrap each condition in parentheses first one is where the item equals mouse, close parentheses, and instead of multiplying the conditions, we add them together. The next condition is where the item equals keyboard, close parentheses on my second condition, close sum, and we get eight. We can see the conditions here, and we add them together to coerce the Boolean values into their numeric equivalents of one and zero. By adding the conditions, we pick up the rows where any one of the conditions are true. That is where the item is mouse or keyboard. And that's fine where the conditions apply to the same column as we have in this formula referring to the item column. But if the conditions apply to different columns, there's a risk of double counting. For example, let's say we want to count the rows where the item equals mouse plus for or, or the sales value is greater than 1000 close parentheses on my second condition, close sum, and we get 26. Let's look at what's happening under the hood. You can see on row 24, both conditions were met and true plus true equals two. 
This means we're double counting this row. To avoid double counting, we can wrap the conditions in the sign function. So we just pop that in the front, add a parentheses around the two conditions. And what sign does is converts any positive number to one, any negative number to minus one, and zero remains as zero. So if we evaluate sign, you can see we're left with ones and zeros. So there's no risk of double counting. And now we get the correct count of 23. So remember, always wrap all conditions in the sign function to avoid double counting. That wraps up conditional counting, which overcomes the limitation of countifs, treating the conditions as AND criteria. Similarly, we can do the same for sumifs, which also treats all conditions as AND criteria. For example, here we can see this sum ifs is summing the sales values where the category is toys and the region is east. And we can do the same with the sum function, multiplying the sales values by the two conditions. But what if we want to sum the sales values for the east region where the category is toys or clothing? Let's take a look. We want to sum the sales values and then we multiply that by our conditions. The first condition is where the region equals east, close parentheses on that condition, times. Now our next two conditions are all criteria. And because they both apply to the category column, there's no risk of double counting. So I don't need the sign function here, but I do need to wrap both conditions in another set of parentheses. And the first condition is where the category equals toys, plus the next condition is where the category equals clothing. Close parentheses on my second OR condition, close it on both OR conditions and close sum, and we get 7751.17. Let's use the filters to check the results. So we want clothing and toys, and the region is east. Let's select the values, and you can see in the status bar the sum is 7751.17. So we can see it's calculating as expected. Next, let's look at conditional averages because these are a bit different. Here I'm averaging the sales values for t-shirts, and it's super easy with average ifs. To be clear, it's taking the sales values not the average unit price for t-shirts. With sum, it's not as straightforward because first we have to sum the sales values for t-shirts. That's the first part of sum. Then to get the average, we need to divide it by the count of rows containing t-shirts. And because this returns an array of Boolean true and false values, we need to coerce them into their numeric equivalents of ones and zeros which we do with the double unary, which is simply two minus signs. And when they're evaluated together, we get our array of ones and zeros, which sum can then add up. And together, we get the same result as average ifs. Of course, you wouldn't use sum here, but if you want all criteria, for example, the average sales for two items, like t-shirts and jackets, then sum is your friend. Let's take a look. So we're finding the average of the sales values multiplied by the criteria, open parentheses. And we need to wrap both criteria in another set of parentheses. So my first condition is going to be where the item equals t-shirts and then plus, because this is all criteria, where the item equals jacket, close parentheses on the second condition, close parentheses around both conditions, close sum. And to make it quick, I'm just going to copy the criteria and then to find the average, we need to divide it by the sum of the count of my two items. Close parentheses on my denominator, press enter, and we get 1,387 and 19. Remember here, we didn't need to use the sign function because there's no way we could double count the criteria because they're operating over the same column. Of course, these techniques can be used to find the minimum and maximum values based on all criteria, so you can try that for homework. If this is already clicked and you're thinking, I want more of this, you'll love my Advanced Excel Formulas course. It's packed with examples like this for Excel functions, but it goes way beyond. You'll learn how to combine functions, troubleshoot complex logic, and write formulas that adapt as your data changes. You can check it out in the description or pinned comment. Another use for these techniques is to search inside text for matching words. For example, here I have some product review data, and let's say I want to count how many reviews mention fast. Starting with sum, and then search, 
I can locate the starting position of the text fast in the review column. So the text I'm looking for is fast. Where am I looking? In the review column, close parentheses. And then if we evaluate search, you can see it returns the starting position of fast in the text string. And if it's not found, it returns an error. Now some can't add up errors. So let's use is number to check if any numbers are found. And then if we evaluate that, you can see it converts those errors into false. And where numbers were found, it converts them into true. Now remember, some can't add up true and false values, but with the double unary, which is the two minus signs, we can coerce them into their numeric equivalent of ones and zeros. So all I need to do now is close parentheses and sum adds them up. So we can see there are eight reviews where the word fast was used. But what if we want two criteria, like reviews that contain fast or affordable? Again, we'll start with sum. And then because we have multiple criteria and both could be true, we need to wrap them in the sign function to avoid double counting. Then I'll use is number with search to look for the first one is fast. Where are we looking? In the review column. Close parentheses on search. Close is number or is number search. The next word is affordable. Where are we looking? Again, in the review column. Close parentheses on search, close is number, close sign, close sum, press enter, and we get 13. Let's check. I've set up some conditional formatting that highlights the cells that contains either one of those words. Let's filter the data, and I'll select the cells. You can see the count in the status bar matches my formula result. Perfect. Sum gives you control over what your formulas calculate, but what if you need them to behave differently across specific rows? If you've ever wanted your formulas to do one thing in some rows and something completely different in others, there's a function for that. And most people have no idea how useful it actually is. I'll show you how it works in this video. Click here to see it in action.